Welcome back. I'm Tanya Rivero. Our conversation about our CBSN original documentary, Non-Monogamy, continues with Elizabeth Sheff. She's a sociologist, author, and expert on children in polyamorous families. She's been working with several poly families for nearly 20 years. I spoke with her about what she learned in her research. Dr. Eli, I know you've done several studies and conducted hundreds of interviews around polyamory and non-monogamy. What did your research tell you about how race and socioeconomic status factor into a polyamorous lifestyle? The wealthier and the more kind of buffered by social privilege people are, the easier it is to be out as any kind of sex and gender minority or any other kind of nonconformist. That if you are shielded by white privilege, if you are upper middle class and can afford a good lawyer, if somebody tries to take your kids, um, that makes it just much easier to be out in terms of being a polyamorous or any kind of consensual non-monogamous person. That's not to say that people of color and working class people don't engage in consensual non-monogamy but it's not as safe for them to participate in research, and it especially was not as safe for them almost 25 years ago when I started doing this research in 1996. In your experience studying human relationships, how much would you say the societal construct of religion and family expectations, societal expectation, uh, affects the way we form and create our sexual and romantic relationships? I would say that family influences, religious influences, other social expectations are absolutely crucial. So for instance, polyamory and that kind of consensual non-monogamy tends to happen primarily in countries where women can earn their own money, can vote and drive and get an education and control their own fertility, things like that. In nations where women have less control over their own lives and their own bodies, consensual non-monogamy is much more likely to look like polygyny, which is one man with multiple wives, mm. but those wives generally are not allowed to have either multiple husbands or multiple sexual contact with anyone besides their husband. Now we know that human beings are complicated and that all relationships have their ups and downs. So are there complications, particular complications to these types of relationships that monogamous relationships may not share? There are definitely complications to these kinds of relationships. Actually though, generally none of those complications are things that you don't find in other relationships as well. For instance, polyamorous people often have to figure out how to juggle their time between competing demands of work and kids and school and multiple partners, and lots of people have to juggle time as well. Mm -hmm. um, polyamorous folks sometimes have a hard time trying to meet one partner's demands when there's another partner who might want something different, and lots of divorced people experience a challenge kind of mediating between their current partner and their past partner. What about jealousy? That's the one that pops to my mind immediately. You know, absolutely. There is certainly jealousy in consensual non-monogamous relationships. And there's actually more jealousy in monogamous relationships have to deal with jealousy more so because so many things are off limits. Right. So while there is jealousy in polyamorous relationships, people deal with it directly and kind of forthrightly, whereas in a monogamous relationship, you're almost not supposed to deal with jealousy. Like it's supposed to be taken as proof that your lover really loves you. If they're jealous of you, then that's because, you know, they you're really important to them. And so that's proof of love rather than something that you can deal with and get over and learn to manage. Right. And I'm sure that polyamorous relationships, uh, you, you see them in all sorts of living arrangements, correct? Uh, how many different types of arrangements do you encounter in your studies? 
The most common living arrangement I've found is an open couple or a couple that might even look monogamous on the surface, like a monogamous couple that just has good friends, you know, mm -hmm. people they hang out with a lot who live and raise their children. Then I would say either a polyamorous triad or three people living together or poly singles, meaning people who don't live with any of their partners. They might live with roommates or they might live by themselves if they can afford it. Um, those two, I think, would be the second most common. Right. And the ironic thing about the triads is that while so many people come, uh, come into the polyamorous community if they're already an established male-female couple, they come looking for another woman to add to their relationship. But the most kind of durable and successful triads I've seen in my research are those made of two men and one woman. So okay. while the triad of one man with two women is mm -hmm. kind of the hottest pornographic item, <laughs> the durable family situation is one woman with two men. How does your research show that pregnancy and childbirth can impact these relationships? If it's a family that's already had children and then they decide to open their relationship, then there's a lot more explaining to the children required and especially knowing how to provide age appropriate information, mostly to tell the children this is above board. If you have questions, that's fine. It's okay to ask. And so in your research, children have not had any particular difficulty dealing with this any more than children have difficulty dealing with other life issues? Um, I would say sometimes children do have a difficulty dealing with it, much mm -hmm. in the same way that children who have same-sex parents sometimes feel uncomfortable being different at school or something, and they're different because of their parents, mm -hmm. specifically. The difference with polyamorous children is that polyamorous families tend to really blend in to society because so many children have divorced parents right now that it's very common for a to kid to have mom and her new husband and then dad and his new boyfriend and they're all coming to right. the soccer game or something like that. But I would say that the added parents and the added resources financially and emotionally and practically are really outstanding mm -hmm. for the children. These families are not free of difficulties by any means. They certainly experience trauma and pain and they divorce and they have challenges in their lives like everyone else's. All right, well, because I do imagine that poly families split up just the way monogamous ones do sometimes, correct? Poly families not only split up like monogamous ones, but sometimes even more spectacularly. Right. One of my children respondents called it divorce on steroids because the, all four of his parents divorced each other kind of spectacularly over time. And do then those do those children then face more complicated hurdles, either legal hurdles or or in terms of their well being after those types of multiple defections from the family? Hard to say, right. really. Perhaps less painful because these families focus so much on communication and talking about feelings and negotiating things that often the children know what's happening and have skills, kind of resilience tools to talk about and work through emotions. Right, and in your experience studying the children, are they more or less likely to engage in non-traditional relationships when they reach adulthood? You know, most of them are not sure yet. When I ask them if they think they'll be polyamorous themselves, some of them say absolutely, at minimum polyamory. Others say under no circumstances. The majority of them, however, fall into this kind of middle category of not right now, maybe later we'll see. All right, Dr. Eli, thank you so much. A real pleasure. Thanks for having me. 
Coming up after the break, we speak with attorney Diana Adams, who helps those in the non-monogamous community navigate complicated legal hurdles. You're watching our CBSN Originals, Non-Monogamy.